Welcome to Radio Free Sunroot. You're listening to the interview podcast, Voices for Nature and Peace, where we discuss issues of ecology, empire, justice, and consciousness. We feature a variety of guests who are aware of the challenges of our time and who are working to address them. Here's your host, Calibri Ter Sonnenblum. Episode 25, Portland versus the Feds, featuring Blank, a street journalist. Federal officers have been in Portland, Oregon for the last few days on Trump's orders. They have been abducting people off the streets into unmarked vehicles and attacking protesters with a variety of, quote, less than lethal weapons, including tear gas, pepper pellets, and flashbang grenades. The George Floyd protests in Portland have been active downtown there for over 50 days, but numbers had dwindled to a few hundred a night recently. But with the arrival of the feds and their strong-armed tactics, crowds have swollen into the thousands again, and last night, July 22nd, the mayor himself was tear-gassed. Blank is an indie media comrade of mine from back in the day, and we logged a lot of hours on the streets together, covering protests during the Bush regime. In his second appearance on this show, he gives us the lowdown on what he's been seeing, including what happened to the mayor. Blank is a lifelong Portland resident and has been providing streaming reports from the streets on a regular basis during the recent uprising. So, dude, you've been seeing some exciting stuff lately, huh? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's been crazy, I guess. Yeah, it's been really active, more active than it has been. So, right, because yeah. uh, we we talked before, and it was only the third day uh, of the protests, fifty some days ago, and during that time, the numbers went down, but now the numbers are back up again. Yep, yep, um, definitely after the the feds came, uh, the momentum uh, increased, and people were like, "Yeah, this is an occupying force now. Um, they need to get the hell out," and. That's when the moms uh, that have been dubbed uh, Mom Tifa now, and the dads, <laughs> the dads have been dubbed uh, Dan- Dadarchists. That's what they're called. So you nice. got the Mom Tifa and the Dadarchists that are out there now, <laughs> and, the, and the and the and the moms are out there like locking arms and like going up to the front, and then the the Dadarchists are the ones that have like the leaf blowers and things. And they're out there, like, pushing all the pepper spray balls, you know, the, the cloud that gets dispersed after they shoot them at the ground or whatever, all that stuff away, and the tear gas away. So it, it works out. Like, a lot of other people have been, they've had bleep blowers before then, but they saw that, I guess, and they brought their own. And so there's a lot more of that going on. And, man, I got to tell you, those things are really effective. Are so, they? Oh, yeah, they are. They, they work really well. So um, they've saved my butt a few times, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy just to think that you know these leaf blowers are the, like. So what'll happen is, um, so there'll be like some tear gas canisters that'll be thrown on the ground, and the 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 gas starts just kind of like going everywhere. And the leaf blower like puts sends it in one direction, and then somebody will come over because they have like this cone that's like a protection from the air, and they'll take the canister with their gloves on and pick it up and throw it back you know so otherwise it'd be consuming a giant cloud of tear gas but yeah so it like gives them the opportunity to do that and it just it just you know eventually the whole area gets saturated with tear gas but before all that happens it gives people an opportunity to clear out and kind of get away so yeah it's 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 an interesting tactic and it works it's very effective um uh, and yeah, it's just something that's been going on here. So yeah, you're probably going to see it in other places here soon, unfortunately. But yeah. So the the picking them up with gloves that's important for some reason, right? Well, yeah. Well, you know, it's an uh, tear gas is an incendiary device, um, and so <laughs> it's like a firework basically that's just spewing, you know, smoke gas. You know, um, if you think of it that way, like it would be like a fire. It'd be the equivalent of a firework in a metal canister. That is just, um, you know, shooting off, you know, uh, a cloud of whatever. And, um, 
yeah, it, it, you have to be really careful because you will burn your hand. Like it's like putting your hand on a hot iron equivalent, and nobody wants to do that. So okay, so so the metal's actually physically hot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like that's something that's not you know apparent just watching videos of this stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, you can't tell. And then also, like, sometimes the, the when they, they have different types of tear gas canisters, they have, they have ones that will just jet a uh, smoke from the, 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 well, the gas from the top, and then there's another canister that will jet it from the top and the bottom at the same time. And then there's other canisters that will break into multiple canisters that they throw. Um, so it just kind of goes everywhere. And those often will, will set fires to things um around around them you'll see like um when they when they launch all this stuff at once you'll start seeing like little mini fires start popping up all over the place and if there's anything there that'll catch fire it will um so every little once in a while you'll see something like flare up and, like catch fire and stuff like that so like they're actually starting fires with these canisters yeah um, i thought i saw a report about like fires in the park blocks or something yeah yeah there's actual there's actually fires that are started because there's a few times where they went under like, cars, and I thought they were going to catch cars on fire. That was pretty crazy. There was one. There was one time there was a car that had its window down, and some and some like, federal uh, officer just threw a canister into the car. Um, I was like, "Whoa, that was that would affect." I was like, "I was surprised that didn't catch the car on fire." Um, but yeah, there's just stuff like that, you know, that's going on. So, right. And so last night, the mayor got tear gassed, the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So before all that happened, the, the mayor uh, announced on his Twitter or something like that, that he was he was going to come down to the protests. And people were like, no, he's not. You know, he's not really going to do that. And because and people were like, well, why wouldn't he? He was like, well, because people hate him. Like his he's the commissioner of the Portland police and they've been tear gassing everybody for the past 50 odd days and um they've done it numerous 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 times and it's and he's the one in charge of the portland police and it's just continued to happen and then after all all that was going on then the feds became a thing but you know before all the the federal stuff you know the portland police were tear gassing people not just downtown but all over the city in different parts of uh, North Portland, you know, the Portland police association is and all kinds of stuff like that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so he's coming downtown. That's the announcement. And so people are like, okay, whatever. And, um, people end up seeing him come down and, um, uh, I saw him come down and he comes down and he's, he's got, he's got all these people around him and, um, they're kind of like, I, I don't know if they're, they're just like people that are like, you know, on his side or whatever, or it seemed like kind of like that, that way, like they're more politically on his side, on his viewpoints and approach. And then he had a bunch of, uh, he had like three bodyguards. I think they're off duty Portland or they're sorry. They were plain clothes Portland police, I think because they, uh, because you could tell just by their stature and their demeanor. And, uh, they were all wearing like flannel shirts. Uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, I don't know if it's just a Portland's thing where they have to like identify themselves wearing <laughs> flannel shirts when they're not on duty. But I thought it was a really funny kind of thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and uh, so there's three of them, and they're just kind of around him. And uh, this is, he starts walking towards the Justice Center, where all the people are. And he's walking. Um, he's he, As he's walking, this, this one person comes right up and has a bag full of just expended tear gas, like, ordnance, all the canisters. And, I mean, it's a big bag. We're talking like a grocery size bag. Just dumps it on the ground in front of him and he freaks he freaks out because he doesn't know what those are like he just sees all these canisters just go just get dumped in front of him and he and and he stops dead in his tracks and kind of veers off to the side and it was like he saw that it was like oh i mean it was like it was probably at least like 200 canisters 300 canisters that got dropped in front of him and uh he he, he freaked out for a moment um and that was the that was the start of it. Um, he ends up going over to the 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 justice center, and he's on like on the corner of like third and a, uh, I, I, it's not Taylor. It's probably Taylor. I, I forget the name of the street. Madison, I think it is maybe. Right. He's over the he's over there, and he's on the corner, and uh, he's like, there's all these people that are surrounding him, and he starts taking questions from people. And um, while this is going on, there are thousands of people just off just down just from him. 
Um, I mean, he's like in the crowd, but he's like on the side of it, like the very end of it. And uh, there's all these people listening to these speakers um, from what we call the Portland Protest Bureau, as they call themselves. And they're up there, uh, a bunch of African American community members. They're all speaking and stuff like that. And they're all talking about how they're against uh, the feds being there and they're against Ted Wheeler, you know, and all like all this other stuff that he's done. And they're like, fuck Ted Wheeler, you know, fuck his tear gas, you know, and everyone's and then everyone starts chanting, fuck Ted Wheeler, fuck Ted Wheeler. And um, what's going on? He's right there. Uh-huh. And he, they don't they don't know that he's there. And uh, so you got these people that are asking questions and stuff. And what <laughs> while this is all going on, um, finally like this after like maybe like 20 minutes or so people are asking questions and whatever um one person's like hey you know you're talking to the same 10 15 people here over and over and over again and answering our questions you need they don't those people over there that are speaking they don't even know that you're here you need to go up there on those stairs and you need to go up in front of everyone start taking everyone's questions because you're the mayor here you're the police commissioner you need to go and for like you know, whatever reason, he's just like, okay. And he just goes that direction and he, and he starts heading towards the stairs. And as he's going up there, people are like, you know, they see him and like people are booing him and stuff like that. And he gets up there and, uh, he eventually makes his way up there. And as, as he does, people are completely just booing him and, uh, they don't like him at all. And, um, I don't know what it was. I guess he was really, really, really nervous because, uh, you could hear the speakers who were up there facilitating everything very clearly in their microphones because when uh, he started speaking, he was very soft. Like he was speaking into the, the microphone, but he was like very quiet. You could you could tell he was nervous because a few times there were some fireworks that went off and you saw him jump a few times um, because, of you know, he was he was worried. And uh, while he's up there, like people are like booing him while he's talking. So you can't even, even hear him speak sometimes. And uh, he's up there. Um, he takes a few questions from people after he gets done with his little spiel about um, how, like, you know, either he's trying to change things and whatever. And people were just like, you know, yeah, right. You know, we don't believe you. And um, he's, he's he comes down and he starts talking to people. And uh, that's when the real interviews started happening, when there were actual people from, like, the community. Um, there was one African-American woman in uh, specifically that came down and she's like, you know, my mother's been trying to contact you. I got some questions for you since she's not here and just starts laying into him. And, uh, he, he couldn't go anywhere. He like, he had, he was like, she was like holding him there. <laughs> like, you just like this with these, like just this awesome questions and dialogue. And, um, it was, it was pretty cool to see that. And then after her, there was another, african-american male that came up and he said that he had uh he had i guess he helped up he, he kind of helped with like ted wheeler's campaign or like or, or he was there uh after the campaign had won and he said hey you know we needed we need to do something about the police contract here because in portland after the election um it's always like the first thing the new mayor has to deal with is the the new uh, police contract, which is in like every four years. Uh-huh. And, and so the, the new mayor is like, oh, yeah, I'm for the police kind of thing. So the, traditionally the, the way it's scheduled is the, the new police commissioner always has this new uh, contract that he has to sign. And they always sign it so the police always get everything they want. And um, now – like so, so, so while that's going on, so the guy mentions that, and he's like, you know what, that was four, almost four years ago. You got a new one, you know. If you're reelected, are you going to start really actually changing things? And he's like, yeah, you know, it's like I, he's like, I see what's going on, you know. I've been paying attention now, and we're like, well, you know, because you've been at, we've been out here for over fifty days. It was like fifty five days in Portland, and. um We've been we've been tear gassed over and over and over again. You know, people honestly don't believe you. People think you're full of shit. You know, like they're just saying it to them, and uh, they're like, "You need to really do something." And what's interesting with that right now is the recently uh, the the Portland Police um, Bureau's uh, or Association their union contract. It was it was up in I think June or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and um, what happened was. They the city council unanimous, unanimously voted to extend it the negotiations into next year for one year, 
And they voted to do that with, uh, uh, like, under, like, under a thing, the under umbrella where everything would be transparent to the public. But it kind of seems like it's, because it normally isn't. It's normally not transparent to the public, so nobody knows what's going on. And, um, you know, it's yet to see, like, nobody knows what, what's going to come of that, you know? So it's just kind of like, okay, and it's more lip service, whatever. But, uh, yeah, while well, he's down there, all this is going on. And um, I, I guess while he's in, while he's interviewing all these people, or he's talking to all these people, um, what's going on over at the at the federal building is there's this big giant fence, and I guess they've been slowly learning, like the feds, what kind of fence tactics to use because first they <laughs> because first they just kind of like they used uh, like crime scene crime scene tape, you know that yellow tape that you wrap around crime scenes. They were wrapping that around their pillars and stuff like that, like as of a police line to, to not cross. So that failed because that just got torn down. And then they started using like chain link fences, like 12 foot spans that are like eight feet high or whatever. And people just tore those down. So that didn't work. And then they started using these big giant, like heavy duty metal ones that are about, I don't know, like 10 feet high and they kind of like branch to the bottom like a T and like one side on the back of it has like a longer end, like probably like four to five feet and the front probably has like a couple feet out front. Um, and that's so that it, it's really hard to tip over. Well, people tore those down. And then uh, last night we saw the next iteration of that with um, they have like concrete blocks, the kind that you see like on the freeways that divide the freeways from like, uh, you know, oncoming ongoing traffic J- uh, jersey barriers i think people call those oh okay yeah they they, yeah. they anchor the fence down with those things huh. so, so so that was people couldn't actually like move the fence with those things yet like people are people are like they didn't they didn't expect that so there's probably going to be a change of tactics in what they do next um but you know like it was interesting because there was a door there was there was doors on like the um the south side and the north side on each corner that were left open. And so people were coming in and, and uh, going in with their signs and like giving them the middle finger, the feds and stuff like that. And all that stuff's going on. They're shaking the fence and the feds are coming out of their building and they're, they're, um, they're like pepper balling people and like chasing after people and they're making arrests and stuff like that. That's what's going on. They're, they're announcing that, you know, if you're on federal property, you will be arrested and, all this is going on while Ted Wheeler's down a block away. And um, so we're a block away and all this stuff's going on. And Ted Wheeler decides that he's going to go down into the front of the fence. And so he goes down to the, the front of the fence. And um, there's a bunch of people around him. He's got his bodyguards. And he's standing there. And well, he, when he gets there, the, the feds start uh, launching some tear gas. But um, the leaf blowers had it under control that were out there, and so it really didn't get anywhere, and it kind of went by him. He got a little bit, uh, you could tell, it, he's he's wearing, like, uh, just regular um, hospital mask, you know, the blue and white kind, and he's got some, uh, they look like some goggles that you would wear, like a lab, you know, for, like, lab experiments or something like that, just uh-huh. to have some kind of, like, facial cover, and so he's wearing that, and you can tell he's like, oh, man, you know, like, you could you could tell, like, he's like, oh, this is kind of rough. He's like, this is, but he's just still standing there. So after a while, you know, he's still up there and like people are banging on the fence. People are throwing garbage over the fence. There's fires going on on one side of the federal building, you know, and all of their stuff. And uh, nothing, nothing but garbage is on fire. Uh, but uh, people are launching fireworks and stuff at the feds. The feds are pepper balling people through the fence. And then the feds finally got tired of it and they started launching tear gas and, uh, you know, they're not, they're, they don't do any warnings that they're going to use tear gas. They just do it. And, uh, they, they started just chucking tons of it. And, uh, as it's happening, like I'm watching, uh, Ted Wheeler, like I'm just watching him and he's like trying to take it. Like he's standing there and he's like, he's like holding his breath and you could tell like, like, okay, there it goes. He's like not holding his breath anymore. And he's in, he starts coughing, and it's like this big cloud. And uh, there's another reporter there, um, 
uh, his name is uh, Robert Evans. I don't know if you if you know who Robert Evans is. I've heard the name, but I can't remember from where. Yeah, he had he had a bunch of uh, uh, like podcasts where he did about like society collapsing and stuff like that. Oh, uh, okay. And um, it was really interesting. And then after that, he decided that he was going to move to Portland because he's like, if Portland, if anything's going to happen, you know, Portland's going to fight it. So like, oh, that guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he moved to Portland and uh, he's out there and he's like, how does it feel, Teddy? How does it feel? He's like, you know, you guys have you, your Portland Police Bureau has out, been out here tear gassing protesters 200 times over 200 times since, you know, in the past 50 days. How does it feel? And you and and, uh, you know, as he's like walking away. And because he was getting hit with a big cloud, I mean anybody, anybody that was not prepared like he was, uh, would have to walk away. Um, I was, I was kind of surprised that he took it for as long as he did. I mean, I like, I, I couldn't stand there in that cloud. I don't have a gas mask or anything, so it's just like, I was like, kind of, I was kind of surprised. And as he's walking away, you know, the question was asked again, like, how do you feel about that? And uh, you know, the police have done this two hundred times with people. You know, how does it feel? You don't like it, do you? And he's kind of like he's like shaking his head, no. <laughs> like he did not like getting tear gassed. He's his eyes are watering. You know, he's got stuff coming out of his nose. Like he 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 got gassed pretty hard. Um, and and later on, I guess he said that he wasn't expecting it to be so bad. Uh, it was the first time I think in his life he's ever been tear gassed. But uh, yeah, that's that's essentially what happened downtown. He, he eventually he he started to to get away and. Uh, you know, as he as he got away, like some people were trying to grab him, but security stopped them. And then um, he got he went into like the the Portlandia building, which is right next to City Hall, and uh, they locked the doors. And that was pretty much it. It was a small group of people that were going after him. But after that, um, the tear gas continued um, outside of the federal courthouse. And uh, like ten minutes later, the the Portland police declared a riot. Um, which was like, oh, yeah, you know, thanks for that, Ted. You know, like you take off and then you just get your Portland police to declare a riot. <laughs> it's like, thanks. Um, and then they, they did that like a dozen times or so. And after that, you know, I was I was pretty much done for the evening. I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm out of here. Because they, they didn't seem like they were going to show any force at the time. They're just making an announcement. So they just kept on doing it over and over and over again. And uh, yeah, people were just. By the time I by the time I left, there was still like 500 people. When it started, there was probably about 3,000. Wow! And this has been and this has been the it's this has been the it's been pretty consistent. Um, these protests go on until like three, four in the morning. You know, before they start to get they either get dispersed because the U.S. Marshals and the Feds come running out of their little area. And they start chasing people through the streets of Portland, and they're tear gassing everybody, and they'll like try to arrest people, um, or you know, like the police will do it and push them across uh, I four hundred five, which is about fifteen blocks away from the Justice Center, um, and just totally get them out of downtown. And it's just it's it's just been really really nuts. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's 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 an occupied like forced down there for sure. They, they like, people are really pissed that, uh, the feds are in Portland and then, and it was, you know, it was sort of like all this stuff was, I mean, Portland was still doing a lot, um, before the feds came, but, um, like definitely when, after the fed showed up, like you, you see the numbers just increase like tenfold, like everybody all of a sudden just is downtown again, uh, like new energy, uh, new reasons to be there. Um, on top of everything else that's going on, um, people are just like, no, you guys got to go. <laughs> like they're, they're pissed off that the feds are there and, uh, that they're, what they're doing, driving around in, in unmarked, uh, vehicles, rental vehicles from enterprise, you know, jumping out of vans and just arresting people. Um, and you know, like not even actually arresting them, just basically kidnapping them. They just take them and they just throw them in a, in a vehicle and then, um, bring them to a building and then hold them there and then release them sometime later with no charges. Right, because so. it's not really an arrest, technically speaking. A mutual friend of ours pointed out that one arrest is an actual legal process that happens where you know, uh, paperwork is filed and all this sort of thing, but none of that's happening with these, so these would more properly be called abductions. Yeah, they basically are abductions. And um, yeah, that's been, that's been a thing. It hasn't 
I haven't heard um, anything really the past couple of days, but um, there are vehicles that are driving around and it's freaked everybody out. So like when, so like for the most part, like people are kind of staying together. You're not really seeing uh, isolated groups of people walking around, but you know, like people keep coming to the protests like all night long. They're, like there, there's some people that are leaving, but you know, around midnight, like, like that's that's probably the peak, like one o'clock. You know, where you have like the largest group of people, and it, it and, and and people stick around. I mean, like people get tear gas, they get mace, they get shot at. They're they're not leaving. They're they're pissed. And um, yeah, every time that happens, there's a push where they end up. They'll come out sometimes and push people a few blocks away. People go right back, and you'll have like people actually developing like phalanx, you know, type uh, like shield, like walls now and stuff like that. So when they come back and the the feds are like shooting at them as they're retreating, you know, the people are like they're coming forward with a huge shield wall now and defending everybody that's behind them. It's just all these tactics that are going on now in Portland, and it's really really interesting. But uh, but yeah, but to 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 get back on topic, yes, the mayor got tear gassed really good last night. Yeah, I mean, you know, he definitely needed to have done what he did, you know, go out there and face the people and go out there and face the situation. You know what I mean? So I don't want to say I'm going to give him credit for that because that's what he should do. But, yeah. you know, uh, I will acknowledge that I think there's very few other cities in the country where the mayor actually would end up doing that, what they should do, you know? And yeah. I, and I think that uh, in the national mainstream media, like the New York Times, for example, wrote this one up, this story up, uh, you know, this morning. And um, the message that that's sending to people around the country who are, you know, on the Democratic side of things or, or whatever, but aren't very radical. Well, they're they're getting uh, they're getting stirred up by this in a good way, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I think from that viewpoint, you know, yes, we can we can criticize. Oh, well, it's just optics that he went down there. It's like, well, yeah, sure. But then on the other hand, there is a level at which for people who aren't as radical, those optics, it, it's useful because I think it could radicalize those people, you know? Yeah, I think there's been a lot of that actually going on. Like, you know, we're, we're at first like when the protests were going on and stuff and the feds were kind of here, it was kind of like, eh. You know, like nobody really knew what was going to happen. And then they started shooting at people with uh, their, all their munitions and stuff, you know. And there was, that, there was that one guy who, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he got shot in the head, like right in the face. Oh, and, that poor uh, young man, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, he, and it, his, all his spatial structure, his bones in, uh, in, in his forehead area and around his eyes were like shattered. And uh, people were like, whoa. And there was the mother that ended up coming out like the next day um, in North Portland when the, 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 the protests went up to the, the Portland Police Association. And she's holding a picture of, of her kid and her other kid. And she's like, I'm a mom. Like, how would you feel if this was your kid? You know, and she was just going off. She's like, you fucking assholes. Like, how dare you do this? And she was just like, you know, in their face. I mean, she's inches away from cops and she's yelling at them. And it kind of emboldened, you know, the protest there when she was there. And people were like, wow, man, the power of moms out here. So then, like, I guess now, like, there's a mom block of people now because it's like people are saying, like, hey, that's my kid. Oh, hey, my kid's going down there. Oh, your kid went down there and got hurt? Whoa, like, this isn't cool. And so they kind of organized and they went down there and and they were, like, locking arms. And they're going, no, they're, they're, like, right in front of the federal courthouse. Like, they're on federal property even. Like they're down there saying, you know what, you know, if you're going, if you're going to mess with us, like we're all going down together, and uh, we're 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 not going down quietly. So they're so that they're all showing up, and now you got, you know, the dad archists that are coming down now and like backing up the the mom Tifa, and that's it's it's pretty it's pretty cool to see. But um, it's radicalizing a lot of people, I think. Um, Portland, you know, of course, had a different like viewpoint of it because they're like, oh, you're an asshole. You've been doing this for a while, but. You know, for the rest of the country, you know, see like, yeah, the mayor of a of a of a of a left city, you know, is like getting tear gas by the feds. Holy crap, you know. So, yeah, I see that. You know, pe- people are gonna be like, what else is going on here? And they're learning more about it. And 
you know, yeah, it's it's definitely spreading now that Trump wants to have it in Chicago, uh, Kansas City, uh, what Philadelphia, a few other cities. Albuquerque. Albuquerque. I know, which is not a very big place. But yeah, Albuquerque, they, he wants to send, I guess, 35 of his, uh, of his minions there. Yeah. In a state of shock after the war. We interrupt our program for a brief message. If you appreciate this podcast, please consider supporting Colibri on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash Colibri. That's K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. And now, back to our regularly scheduled... It's crazy. I mean, I, 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 there was something on the news about um, William Barr saying that there were 200 arrests in Kansas City. And, and that freaked out the, the local government. They're like, what? When did this happen? Uh, because all they had was one you know, person that they've arrested um, over there. Um, but it's like, are you planning on arresting 200 people? Like, do you have 200 people that you are, you're profiling right now? Like what's going on with that? Like, why would the attorney general of the United States say that, you know, like what's going on? You know, right. it's like, so there's all this weird stuff that's happening and it's starting to turn into like, you know, basically like an occupation by the federal government at this point. Like if they're starting to spread out and, and, uh, you know, go they're, they're they're going around literally just just abducting people. So mm. it's just like whoa, you know, like, and now you're seeing like you know, of course, you know, people are hearing that and they're seeing that now like city local government officials, like county co- county commissioners, even there was one of the the county commissioners over here from Monoma County. She was out there with the the moms and and she got tear gassed and she was on the periphery of the protest. She wasn't even really like engaging too much. She was just observing. And she got gassed really good. Um, one so of the Mul- like, one of the Multnomah County commissioners. Yeah. yeah oh wow. She, okay, I hadn't heard yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, it was. It, yeah. So that happened. Um, I can I can show you an article later. Um, but yeah, she she totally got tear gassed, and she was like, "Oh my god!" You know, like she's like, "This is just this is totally wrong. That's what is happening." You know, nobody was doing anything that was peaceful, and um, yeah, she still got gassed. So, you know, like the feds just don't, they just don't care. Right. So So there's been conflicting stories about how much cooperation is or has been going on between the feds and the Portland Police Bureau. What's been your observation on that? Oh, they've been working together. They've been definitely working together. Now, like yesterday, there was um, there was a, a court order saying that they couldn't work together, I guess. Um. But before then, they were definitely working together. Um, you would see them come out of the the federal building with the the Federal Protective Services or FPS, um, U.S. Marshals, um, Homeland Security. Um, it, it, it was it was super clear that they were working together. So um, last night, there I didn't see them like physically working together. Uh, because like it's it's in, because like the 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 federal protective services wear uniforms that look exactly like Portland police uniforms when they're when they're like they're when they're doing crowd control stuff. So it's really difficult to tell whether or not they are the Portland police or they are federal officers. Some of them, but the, the U.S. Marshals are very obvious because they're wearing camo, you know, and it's very apparent. Um, but you know. Earlier on, it was it was super obvious that they were Portland police because you, you can you can tell um, by like what they're wearing. They've got like you know police on them, and it's it's more spe- it, it's more specifically clear. But so yes, they have been working together uh, up until just yesterday. Now the only working together that I've seen is like you know the the federal police will do like their announcement, and the Portland police will do like their announcement. But they're kind of doing them at the same time, so they're not really working together. They're just kind of going off at the same time. I don't know. They're probably in communication, but they're not actually like physically working together out on the on the street, you know, with cr- any crowd control tactics together. It, it appears anyway, as right. of last night. I mean, I, so, I, we can be certain that they're communicating with each other. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I totally I totally believe they're communicating, but it, it, it's interesting because um, for the past week or so the the federal police have just 
been kind of like going out and doing their own thing, and the Portland police have just been letting them do it. So, right. so it's it's. I think it's because the um, the mayor has told the Portland police to who's the mayor is also the police commissioner um, of the Portland police uh, to like you know take a step back and kind of lay off, but. Um, the, the feds have been really just kind of like running around doing whatever they want. I mean, really like running around downtown for blocks and blocks and blocks and, and, and chasing people down that they think have laser pointer pins or, um, you know, are throwing things. Um, and, and there's, and the, they don't even know if those are the people they're just guessing. Uh, they don't have any probable cause. They're just, they're just going after people that they think are those people. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, like they're just doing whatever they want at this point and people are just pissed. And, and, you know, I've seen some, uh, uh, unarresting of, of people, the feds coming in and trying to like arrest people. I've seen other people grab that person they were trying to arrest and shove the feds off of them. Um, and, and I've seen that happen up a couple of times. Um, but you know, the feds will come in and they got to They're, they're pretty aggressive. They're not, they're not messing around. And, they have pulled out uh, firearms. Um, they have like they have legit like handguns. They pull out some of them. have pulled out like assault type rifles and pointed them at the crowds. Um, they are not airsoft weapons. Uh, it's very distinct. You can tell that they are legitimate weapons that they're pointing at the crowd with live ammunition in them. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. So. Right, because the I, now I hadn't heard this, and, and and you can tell because, well, the the like the um, whatever they're using to fire the tear gas canisters, the the rubber bullets or whatever, they look different than other firearms, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, like you can the the firearms that they use for like you know crowd control, it, it, you know paintball guns and you know the forty millimeter like cannons and stuff like that for for launching uh, like you know rubber bullets and like foam tipped like projectiles and other things like that, like those are very obvious, like they're, they're very apparent, and so you know you know when they're going to start doing stuff with those, and um, it's 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 super obvious. But it's people are watching them like crazy, and they're noticing that they're they're pulling out their other way. They're like be against a pillar by the building, and you'll see a, 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 a U.S. marshal with an a, a assault weapon, you know, pointed at the crowd, and it's like pointed, you know, at like head level, like you know, like he's pointing, you know, direct, you know, straight from like he's aiming and he's and he's tracking whoever he's looking for or something. You know, it, it's 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 kind of scary, and um. You know, there's been other times where though there's been uh, at least one instance where one of the U.S. marshals pulled out his his uh, handgun and he he started walking towards the crowd and he was he had his hit his gun out like he was going to do something and uh, he ended up putting it away and walking away. But uh, yeah, they're 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 pulling out um, you know real guns, real weapons with live ammunition in them and um, you know on the people in Portland, Oregon. So. You know, it's only a matter of time, I, I kind of think, until, like, something goes really, really south. And, um, you know, that's that's one of the things that the mayor was bringing up. He's like, we don't want the feds here. You know, we want them out before they kill somebody. Because at, they, at some time, this continues the way it has been. It has been escalating. Like, he's worried that they're going to kill somebody. And honestly, I am, too. Like, it seems to be going in that direction. And then what's going to happen? You know? Like... Like then it's gonna go then then it's gonna get really out of control I think so I I, I don't know what will happen for sure but I I don't whatever happens it won't be good so you know that's that's what's happening right right and there's been snipers on rooftops too I've heard oh yeah yeah the, there's there's snipers with their spotters up on rooftops people have taken photographs of that um they have. They have like little like areas. There's like balconies where they'll be up there like spotting people and you know taking pictures of people and um, just monitoring the situation. But they 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 that that sniper is definitely there. Um, it on the federal uh, property on the federal courthouse. He's like on the roof. He's he's up there like almost every night that I've seen. So um, there's been like there's been streamers that have like. Um, aggregate streams and they will compile like uh the the local news channels flying around their helicopters and you can see like them up on the rooftop on the corner like right there you know like 
when people know that they're there and you can see them when the people shine people have like these flashlights that are like 20,000 lumens and they're super bright <laughs> and and uh and you can see them up on the roof and lots of people have those flashlights because the police one of the tactics they do is they use these flashlights that are really bright and then they flash and it kind of disorients you that's that's what they're supposed to do so <laughs> So the police were doing that, and people were like, "Well, why don't we get ours too?" And so, like, all these people went on like online, and they they bought a bunch of these things. And now, the police, whenever they come out, they got these giant, not not giant, but like small, like really bright, you know, twenty thousand lumen flashlights. Like, you know, probably like a dozen of them being shined at them at any one point, plus laser pointers on top of that. You know, it's it's a tactic that p- other people are using, as well. It's another tactic that the crowd is using to to stop them from. Uh, going after people identifying people and you know being able to see and uh, like grab someone so you know it's there's a bunch of stuff like that going on um and yeah when the when the when the sniper was up there uh that really like like showed the level of escalation that was going on to a lot of people and uh, a lot of people just decided that you know what just gonna go all in and uh that just really like after that people were like yeah i'm going i'm gonna go too and it just really fired people up they were really pissed they're like not here in Portland. We're not going to let this happen. So you just start seeing more and more people show up. The more the more force that they show, the more people go downtown. So, you know, at some point, you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to leave um, if they want this to stop. And you know, people are saying that there's no schedule for that. So I don't see these protests any anytime soon. They could go on for another sixty days. They could go on for another six hundred days. There's there's no there's no telling what, how long it's going to go on for. Right, because I think the the of course probably what Trump and the Feds were hoping is that they could come down with a show of force and and quickly restore what they call order and sort of scare everybody. But it seems like the tactic has backfired. It's really backfired, and now there's all kinds of um, the state attorney general is like got a court case in federal court against. Uh, against the use of force and the federal marshals and the AT, I think the ATF, uh, Homeland Security, um, you know, Federal Protective Services, like all, all kinds of lawsuits are flying now. And then there's the individual lawsuits from people. And then there's the class action lawsuits from people. There's a lot of lawsuits that were going on. And before all this even started happening, all these protests from the George Floyd stuff, uh, there was already seven big lawsuits that were going forward against the, the, the city of Portland and the Portland police bureau for, uh, their excessive use of force, um, that were going on and probably other cases too, but I know of at least seven that were going on. And, um, you know, like Portland has a pretty brutal history. Um, at least when the, when it comes to like how the Portland police bureau responds and, and you've seen it yes. yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, and it's been going on for, for decades and, you know, people are just, they're just tired of it. And it's, it's just, it's just interesting to see now that, um, like, like 15 years ago, you would not see the level of, of, of tactics like involved. I don't think as you would today, it's definitely gone up, um, in how bold, like people are getting, like people are, are, are not sitting down and taking this quietly anymore they're just like they're going for it um people are are not afraid of uh going in there and 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 doing stuff now where before you would see people like sit on the ground and get arrested and you know that would be it now people are like we're gonna tear down their fence let's do it let's go you know like and you know one of the chances we do this every night (laughs) we do this every night like so like it's just like yeah (laughs) so you know it, it it's just it just continues and um you know it's it's ever evolving out there right now this is all kind of like uncharted for the portland but history shows that you know if you don't rise up against like people that are oppressing you like this they're going to you know take over and so people know that you know in the back of their minds i i think and feel and so they're just not they're not cool with anything that's going on and they're they're tired of it so they're 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 fi- actively out there fighting against it. 
That's great. I, I personally have been inspired uh, by what I've seen so far, you know, just in the news and on social media, but I'm even more inspired now to hear, you know, the accounts that you're telling me. I'm hearing details here that I haven't seen anywhere yet before. And, and I do think it's really important at this point, uh, you know, that this fight is happening in Portland and that Portland not be allowed to fall uh, to the feds. Um, it be, it, because that's what they're hoping, you know, like it, the, the, the line has to get drawn and now they're going to try it in these other cities. These other cities can now hopefully take, you know, inspiration uh, from Portland and then up the tactics there. Yeah. And it's, it's just like there's no big umbrella group of, of leaders doing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's great. There's there's no there's no um, there's no organization that's like the facilitator of everything. There's all these little groups like you, you got you got people that are coming down and, and, and speaking about things. And that's their thing. They're, they're, there's just a bunch of people that are doing a bunch of speaking, you know, because they're trying to in, inform and educate people. And then you got other people that are coming down and they're 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 just they're just cooking food. Uh, like there's a there's a, a, a stand which has been dubbed Riot Ribs. And uh, it's this guy who just started coming down and cooking ribs for people. And he's been arrested and targeted. He's had his van's tires slashed by the Portland police. They don't like him at all. And they've they, they've they've taken uh, pepper spray and pepper sprayed his entire like area where um, he had all his supplies. Um, they had a bunch of uh, like you know hand sanitizer and gloves and things like that. They pepper sprayed it all like all the, because they don't want them there. There's no reason to do it, but the police just like CS pepper sprayed that stuff. And that was the and, Portland the Portland police. Yeah, it was the Portland police. Mm, right. Uh, and um, and so they've been trying to, to get them out of there. But, you know, the guy just keeps coming back. And, you know, he's he, like people keep funding him and giving him uh, funds. And he just keeps buying food and giving it away to, for free. I mean, it's all free. Everything is free. And um, you just got to go down there and say, hey, I'm hungry. And they're like, oh, here's some food. Or, hey, I got some gloves. And like, yeah, here's some gloves. Oh, do you have any goggles? Oh yeah, we got some goggles here, some spare ones, and then you know, get somebody they'll, they'll bring out the tear gas, and then all of a sudden they're all gone, you know. But like uh, for good reason. But yeah, no, they're they're doing stuff like that, and then um, you got medics down there which are doing their thing, and then you got you got uh, your little divisions of of uh, black block that are down there, and they're doing their thing, you know, and then little groups of friends and stuff like that, you know, like nobody. And then you have your streamers that are going on, and, and you know they're 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 covering everything. Nobody is like part of any large group it's the the only large group that's down there is when everyone's down there together like as like a mass but like as far as like the internal workings of like what's going on like it's it's no there's no leaders here it's it's really a like a, a united force of like an ideology that everyone's coming in like fuck the feds fuck the portland police we're tired of this shit we're, we're not going to stand for it and so that's why we're here and so, you know, all this stuff has been going on and people are just supporting everybody whatever way they can, you know, with their own skills and abilities and, you know, just just, you know, being there. So it, it's it's really a collective effort and uh, it's it's really interesting and good to see. So that's that's something that's been happening here, because as you well know, uh, as if you are an organization and it's led from like a top down structure. It's really easy to just go after the leaders. That's what um, Portland police and, and federal authorities are known for doing is targeting a group of people going after leaders. And like, you know, traditionally, like you like the saying goes, if you cut the head off, you know, like the snake or whatever, the body dies or whatever. Well, if you, it, if you what if you have like 50 million heads, you know, to the body, you know, like you, you can't you can't stop it, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's that's what's going on right now. And there's, there's just no, there's no way the way it is right now that they can actively stop. And, and, and you, and you see that happening. Now. These, these protests are growing, you know, like there's just more and more people showing up and yeah, it's, I don't, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. So I'm really glad but, to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Yeah. I mean the, the city of Portland, they passed a resolution that says that the Portland police cannot work with the feds. And that was unanimous. That what happened the other day. That was yesterday, I think. That was their city council meeting. Yeah, that they was had. yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they passed that, but you know, um, we'll see if that actually actually is obeyed because um, you know, 
the like it, it, like the the Portland Police Association that's in, uh, headed up by uh, Daryl Turner, who's been there for a long time as the one who's in charge of the Portland Police Union. Oh, that guy's so, a complete jackass. He's still there, oh. and uh, and um, he's like. He's just like, you know, whatever. And he's just like, the, the poor police are going to do their job, you know, and he's just kind of saying that. And, you know, when we hear that kind of thing in Portland, that means like, oh, you want to tear gas people again. You know, you, you want to you want to use force and, you know, do that to like terrorize people um, because that's what they do. They just escalate. That's what the Portland police do. They escalate and they escalate and they escalate. And, you know, it's a lot of this is their fault right now, because if they hadn't escalated to where the level they had, like these protests would have never happened because, you know, when, when they, it, people in Portland, they, they don't back down when, you know, something happens, like they get assaulted by the police, especially at a protest. It, 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 and if anything, it antagonizes them. And so, you know, they, they stay and, you know, they don't go anywhere and that pisses them off even more. And so they should, like, and then people are just, they're like, all right, yeah, we're going to keep showing up. And, you know, now the mayor has basically nullified the Portland police, and uh, also another thing that's happened was they uh, they had a special session here in in Portland or not in Portland they had, they had a special session in Salem regarding police accountability and reform, and um, like the state the, legislature. Or... Yes, in, uh-huh. yeah, the state legislature and the and the governor, um, and one of the things that they passed was uh, a bill. That stated that uh, the Portland police could not use a state apart, uh, appointed arbiter um, uh, to reinstate police officers that had been fired for misconduct, and um, that's something that's happened in Portland, where the the mayor, as the police commissioner, has fired. I believe I believe one of the cases where it happened was under Sam Adams when Sam Adams was the mayor. I remember that like mm-hmm. two mayors ago um, in Portland. Um, and he fired he fired the the officer, the police association, the police union, went to court uh, on the state level and got the officer reinstated as a police officer with back pay, even though he had been fired for his misconduct because he killed he killed somebody. Um, they just gave him back his job. Yeah, I and remember. So, Ridiculous. And so now and now that that special session happened now police can't use that anymore to reinstate officers and they're pretty pissed off and up and up in arms about that and they're trying to appeal the process and stuff and so but right now it's law and so it's pretty interesting um on that level and then uh yeah like there's oh, there's all this stuff that's going on on the state level i guess um where they're trying to do more police reform and and whatnot but um you know at least they 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 did that i mean that was a big deal um, but, um, it's an ongoing process. So, right. And of course there's the whole irony of the, the fact that the, this whole situation began as protests against police brutality and that the police responded with police brutality. Yeah. It proves everybody's point, you know? And it's like, yeah, you guys are out of control and they just kept doing it. And, you know, and it's the qualified immunity stuff that's there too, where, <sighs> Yeah, they can they can basically go out and do whatever. And I believe the Supreme Court kicked that qualified immunity case back down. Um, so it's it was upheld. You know, they can pol- the police still have qualified immunity. Um, I think that Supreme Court case happened like two weeks ago or so. Yeah, it was feels really like, recent. Mm-hmm. Feels like an eternity. But um, yeah. but yeah, they, so they so that's still going on. Um the the mayor was specifically asked about that question um, last night. Um, he really didn't have an answer for it, um, other than saying that reforms were needed. Um, but um, yeah, like there's stuff needs to change, <laughs> and and uh, you know like obviously we're at a place where um, it's at a tipping point. I think right now, like it's it's either gonna get it's going to escalate even more or it, I think it's going to escalate even more. I, I, I really do like, because of this Trump administration, the way he is like, he's terrible at, you know, things like running. He's terrible at running everything. Like he can't, he can't, uh, effectively like run, you know, um, 
agencies that are here to help during a pandemic. You know, he can't he can't do that effectively. Um, his, his jobs numbers are terrible right now, so he can't say the economy is like strong. So what does he have to do? He has to go out and be a tough guy and sh- and, and come to like left leaning cities that don't support him. And send out, you know, thugs to assault people to make himself look tough to his base, you know. So, like, I feel like it's just going to escalate. And you see it happening in other cities now where they're sending other people. It's just like, it's like, when's it going to end, you know? And this is probably the start of something, like, really bad. So, um, the people here, at least, aren't, they're not standing for it. They're just pissed off and they're fighting actively against it, so... Right. When people see fires happening and, you know, people throwing water bottles and stuff, you know, it's because people are getting abducted and their constitutional rights are being violated and they're being assaulted, you know, by an occupying force that shouldn't even be here. Um, you know, it's it's the citizens of this country, you know, that are being attacked by the by the federal government. That's what's going on right now. People need to understand that. And, you know, like it's it's really bad and if something's not done it can get way worse so people are out there doing trying to do something about it for trying to prevent it from getting to that point but um you know it's that it, that's happening right now that's what's happening in portland do, do you got any advice for uh people in chicago or other cities uh yeah you can yeah they should uh definitely like watch what's going on in Portland and um like learn the tactics that are happening here because well they're pretty effective and awesome and um you know it's for the most part um it's it's really kept people at bay make sure that you got a good strong legal collective going on there uh, we we have the NLG over here that's uh, been doing legal support uh jail support and um, the ACLU which has been going after people. Uh, not people, but going after the federal government and the Portland police uh, and and uh, holding them accountable in court and suing the crap out of them. And that seems to be one of the things that really applies pressure to them is like all these court cases. And so if people have that set up and they've got like that kind of like backbone, that infrastructure set up, it can really, really, really help them, especially in the long run when this is all said and done and those people are out of jail from these protests, they're going to need support you know so that's one system i see uh that that's really essential there that people should have set up um or make sure that it is set up or do some volunteering to make sure that it's functioning so that it's there for people when they need it um but yeah like basically just people need to just look out for each other and just realize like have discussions about what's happening because and the more people know it seems like the more people that are paying attention to what's happening now they're uh, actually going out there and saying, you know, screw this. Especially like um, with like veterans. I don't know if you saw that one uh, story about the veteran that was out there with like the Navy sweater on, his yeah, Navy Academy I saw sweater. Him. Mm-hmm. He went out there after he heard what was going on, and he went down there to ask, you know, the Fed, the federal officers that were there, like, hey, what are you doing? You need to remember your oaths, you guys. Like, you're here to uphold the Constitution and protect these people and then they they broke two of his fingers you know yeah um pepper so sprayed just, him. Mm-hmm. yeah they pepper sprayed him and you know that that was all he could take he said but you know um you know these are just they're not they're not just um kids dressed up in in black clothing no no this is not the case this is everybody right now you got you got veterans down there you got mothers and fathers you got you know, you got commissioners, uh, county commissioners. You got mayors now down there, like getting attacked by by the feds. It's it's crazy. So it's like this. It's a it's not any stereotypical group. You know, this is this is basically like a population now that like ev- it involves everybody that's getting hit, and uh, they're just not discriminating against who it is. They don't care. So at this point, they're just they're just running around doing this, but. Um, in, in my opinion, just, you know, if you're out in one of these cities, just go ahead and start organizing and, you know, don't stop anyone from what, doing what they want to do. Everybody has different tactics. Everybody has different levels of involvement. If somebody doesn't want to go down the front lines and they just want to, like, pass out leaflets, let them pass out information. 
if someone wants to go down and they want to confront the, the, the police, let them. That's their decision. That like they they're responsible adults. They know the consequences. They can do it. You know, like and I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying that's their decision to make. So, you know, if if everybody has a role to play, so let them let them play that role. Because, you know, we're all in it together and, you know, it's just something that will come together if you let it. So just just let it happen. And and don't 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 obstruct anybody from going out there and and taking part of any action that they want to do. Just just it, because like they're there to ultimately protect you and and keep, you know, the feds from running around the cities, just abducting people. You got you, you got to let you got to let people, you know, stand up for what they believe in. And if that means that they're going to do things one way and you don't agree with it, you know, then that, that's fine. But don't don't stop them. So. You know, that's my advice to the, to these other cities. Let people do what they're going to do. Diversity of tactics. Yep, it's really important. Voices for Nature and Peace is produced in the Gila River Valley, New Mexico, USA, on land that we acknowledge is illegally occupied Apache territory. The intro music is Zero G Yogi by Big Z, with narration by Kelly Moody of the Ground Shots podcast. This outro music is Trip A, also by Big Z. Commercial break narration by Nikki Hill. To become a financial supporter of this podcast and to gain access to members-only content, visit patreon.com slash colibri, K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. For more information on Radio Free Sunroot programming, please visit RadioFreeSunroot.com. Thank you for listening. May you find joy in your own nature and peace.